Hi guys, Bronte here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to epoxy your countertops. We are not professionals, we are homeowners, and I'm going to show you how we achieved a beautiful marbled look for a fraction of the cost. I'm taking my old drab Formica countertops and our wood island top to a beautiful white and gray marbled look using a Ligari epoxy kit and some gold spray paint to achieve that marbled look. I cannot wait to show you step by step the process on how we got our counters to look this way, so don't forget to stick around. It's time to take these old Formica countertops to a new generation and get them updated. We are going to be going for a white and gray marbled look on these countertops as well as our island countertop and I am so excited to share everything with you guys, walk you through step by step. I am also going to have another video that's going to come out on how we prepped our countertops in our kitchen to apply everything so don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stick around and look for that. I have been waiting to get this epoxy countertop video out. Everybody has been asking me about it so here it is. I'm going to walk you through step by step everything that we did to achieve the look that we did. I'm going to be using Ligari products and I'm going to be using their white epoxy kit. I actually found them here on YouTube and that is how I discovered the whole epoxy thing. I was actually looking up how to paint granite countertops or paint your countertops to look like granite and I stumbled upon one of their videos and I was hooked. The whole process is so cool to watch and it is so satisfying and I am so excited to be using Ligari products. So we are going to be using the white pigmented epoxy and they do have highlight metallic colors that you can add to epoxy to get your highlighted look, your marbled look, your granite look, whatever you're going for. But today I am going to show you how I achieved this look that we did on our countertops using Rust-Oleum gold spray paint to achieve a gray look. I know that kind of sounds weird, but that is exactly what we did. We are going to be using a lot of these 3 8 inch nap rollers by Purdy, and I am also going to be using a squeegee to blend the color this lovely blending tool for the drill bit and today we are going to start out by priming our countertops like I said they had already been prepped there will be a whole separate video for that this is just how to epoxy your countertops so we are going to start by priming them and we are using the Ligari primer it's a white primer and I am going to show you exactly how to get your counters primed so that you can apply your epoxy countertop. You're going to want to mix your primer, the A and the B, with the recommended amount of water for two minutes. And then my trick for you is to roll out your rollers on a piece of tape before you apply your primer or before you apply your epoxy, before you're applying anything to your counters, or even if you're painting your walls, roll out your rollers. Even if they say they are lint free, there is still going to be lint coming off of them. So just use a piece of sticky tape and roll your rollers before applying anything. So here we are rolling out our primer. You do not need to do it super thick on the top. Do not worry about the top, but make sure that you are getting those sides really well because the epoxy is going to be self leveling on the top and it's going to be dripping off the sides and be much thinner on the faces of your counters. So on the sides where it is going to pull off, definitely, definitely make sure that you are hitting those with primer really well. If you have extra primer, you can always go over them again, but do not worry if it is kind of thin and transparent on the top because the epoxy is pigmented, so it will have its nice color that you are going for, whatever pigmented epoxy you choose, that will be on the top. So we are just rolling out making sure that we get the back splashes really well, as well as the fronts and the sides of the countertops.
notice while you are applying your primer that the top part of it kind of looks like frog eyes or like bubbles that had been popped. You can always roll over your countertops again with the excess primer. You do not need to do a super, super thick coat and I would not wait to apply a second coat if you are going to for too long because if you wait too long and it gets too tacky, you will be pulling up whatever primer that you had already put down. Like I said, focus on those backsplashes if you are doing your backsplashes and focus on the fronts and the sides of your countertops because the epoxy will pool over those way thinner than it will on the top of your counters. But if you have excess, you can always go over and give your countertops a second coat, especially if you are seeing that popped bubble look. I highly recommend that you go over them again. your countertops are primed you let them dry for about 45 minutes to an hour you don't want them sticky you don't want them super tacky so let your countertops dry with the primer on them for 45 minutes to an hour once your countertops have dried you are ready to start mixing up your epoxy Are you guys ready to get the fun really started? Now we are going to be mixing up our white pigmented epoxy in one of our clean buckets. I am going to have a list down below of everything that you should purchase from Lowe's or Home Depot before embarking on this project that will help make this whole process way easier for you. So we're gonna mix part A and part B of the epoxy. We're gonna mix it in a bucket and we are using this paddle mixer that goes on the drill bit to make it a lot easier for us. You can mix it by hand, it's just gonna take a lot more work. And then you're going to wanna to mix this for two minutes, making sure that you are mixing on the sides, mixing up from the bottom as well. And then once you have done finished mixing this for two minutes, you're going to pour it into another clean bucket to ensure that you are mixing properly to make sure that you don't have anything sticking to the sides that's going to mess up how your epoxy cures and here my husband is just spinning the epoxy off into the clean bucket before pouring the epoxy from the other bucket into the clean bucket i know it kind of sounds like you're doing a lot of mixing but this is to ensure that your epoxy sets right and cures right so then he is going to take a stir stick and scrape anything from the sides of the first bucket it and get whatever he can out of it and then once that is done you're gonna go back and you're gonna mix your epoxy for another two minutes before applying it For the fun stuff we are ready to actually epoxy these countertops you're going to want to put a thick bead down the middle of your countertops and then roll it out the longer it sits in the bucket the faster it sets up inside of the bucket and you do not want that to happen because it, it can start smoking and doing all sorts of stuff that you don't want it to do in there so get it out on your countertops as soon as you can you have about an hour to work with your epoxy once it is out so make sure that you roll it out do not roll it out to the edges yet make sure that you have covered enough of your counter space that you will have enough that it is not too thin in some spots make sure it is even it is self-leveling but that doesn't mean that you want to have a pool of epoxy on one side and barely any on the other side so evenly spread it out before rolling over to the edges and going off of the edges and rolling the fronts of your countertops so once you have made sure that it is all level and there is enough out there you can start bringing it over to the edges it is going to pool off the sides of your countertops that is why the plastic is there do not worry about that that is totally fine and that is expected to happen just make sure that you are covering your countertops evenly and then make sure once you start rolling out the fronts or your backsplashes that those are also covered evenly as well everything is going to go with gravity it's going to start from the top and pull down the bottom so that is why we said that you need to be very very good about getting your backsplashes in the front of the counter with the primer because it is going to be so much 
thinner on the fronts of your countertops and on your backsplashes than it is on the top. The epoxy is self-leveling, but that does not mean that you cannot just that does not mean that you can just leave it there and let it figure it out for itself. You still have to roll it out. And especially with those backsplashes, which we learned from our own mistakes, you really need to watch them to make sure that they are not dripping. We have drips on ours. It's fine. Not everything is perfect and it was our first time doing this. So just make sure you are covering everything evenly. And then keep going over your counters, keep rolling those drips on the front, and then you can also take a paint mixer and scrape away whatever drips are on the underside of your counters. Day. Once you feel that you have evenly spread out your epoxy over your countertops, you are ready for your highlight color. Now the Ligari products do come with a metallic pigmented highlight that you can choose from, but today we are going to be using Gold Rust-Oleum Spray Paint. I saw this look in one of their videos and I was like, I'm going to try that. I want that look in my kitchen. So to get liquid spray paint, you just hold that spray paint down and you spray it into a cup. I highly recommend using a towel or a paper towel to cover the spray paint bottle as you are spraying it into the cup so that you're not getting that off spray from the spray paint all over you, all over everything in your house, all over your countertops that you just rolled out. So once you have the liquid spray paint amount that you want, you are ready to apply it to your countertops. I'm just using one of those paint mixers from Lowe's to just drizzle it on there. Eventually you are going to see that we just decided to pour it out of the cup because it was so much easier. I am going for a white with a muted gray look and you're probably wondering why are you using gold spray paint to achieve a gray look and I'm going to show you exactly how I got the gray look that I was going for using the gold spray paint and a putty knife to get that look. I ended up rolling it out with a roller, but you can use one of those putty knives or a scraper that you use to apply Bondo or putty to anything that you are repairing to achieve this look. So once you have enough of the spray paint or the highlight color that you are going for, you are just going to take your squeegee, your putty knife, whatever it is that you are using to just bring up that white epoxy and that is going to take that gold spray paint from gold to a gray because the white is going to basically cover it up but you're still going to have that muted marbly veiny look. I ended up using one of my 3 8 inch nap rollers because the squeegee was just taking way too long to do. So I ended up just rolling it out and kind of swirling it around. There is no right way, there is no right wrong way to do this. You just go for the look that you are going for. You can do as much or as little of a highlight color as you want. Hey, you could even leave it all white if you wanted to but I'm going to show you how we achieved our highlight color and the muted gray marble look that we did. Oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to process was kind of intimidating doing this whole veiny look because this was like the make it or break it kind of deal for me. If I didn't do it right, I was going to be beating myself up over it. And at first I was not loving the look, but I kept forgetting that the epoxy is self-leveling and it will just kind of level out and it gives it a really beautiful marbled look. I just took my nap roller and kind of swirled everything around. I didn't want it super veiny like I had said before and it ended up being the perfect amount of muted gray marbled look that I was trying to achieve. When we were younger, we used to sit on the grass Among the flowers, we just let the days pass basically you're just going to rinse and repeat the steps that I just showed you until you achieve the, the look that you are going for. So whether you want it super marbly, super granite, super gray, or whatever look you are going for, keep on going with that highlight color or if you're just going for a muted look, don't add a ton to it and then just swirl it around and mix that up so that you are achieving the look that you are going for. And once that is done, you're pretty much done applying your epoxy and then you just need to let it sit and cure. My best tip for you, if you are doing it with backsplashes like we did, 
sit around and babysit your backsplashes. Get a paintbrush and as soon as you start seeing those drips, once you're past the point of being able to roll it without giving it some roller marks, get a paintbrush and kind of feather them out. It will help when it is leveling out and you won't have the huge strips. We didn't do that. That is something that I wish we would have done and we do have drips on our backsplash. They're not horrid. It's not a horrible eyesore, but it is something that I wish that we would have done differently. So I'm giving that tip to you. Keep the paintbrush on hand. Kind of just babysit them until they really start to set and really start to cure so that you can feather out any of those drips on the backsplash or on the front of your countertops. Life ran away from us If I could go back be 17 And voila this is how our epoxy countertops have turned out I am thrilled with the colors and how they turned out it is like a complete transformation for our kitchen next up is these cabinets so we are going to be applying a top coat to our epoxy countertops we waited until the next day to apply it we are using the gloss urethane top coat by ligari for added durability and scratch resistance a top coat is not completely necessary but it helps to keep your countertops looking nice for longer you do not have to do it the next day but if you let it completely cure and you wait a few days before doing it and it hardens you will have to stand or scuff up the entire surface so that there is a chemical bond between the urethane and the epoxy so not only is your top coat great for added durability and scratch resistance, this is the perfect time for you to get any imperfections out of your epoxy countertops before applying your top coat, such as any lint or dust, air bubbles, dog hair, hair that may have fallen in there. And this is going to sound crazy, but you are going to sand your countertops wherever those imperfections are. I know you just applied them. Why are you going to sand them? But you're going to take 220 grit fine sandpaper to remove any imperfections from your countertops. I had a bunch of dog hair settled into mine, a bunch of dust and stuff, so I highly recommend that you close your vents before applying your epoxy to try to eliminate as much dust or anything flying around in the air as possible. So just take your 220 grit sandpaper. You don't want to sand it so hard, but just lightly sand it until the imperfection is removed or as little as possible and then you are going to want to wipe down your counters after you have finished sanding out any of your imperfections and we are using the denatured alcohol to clean up the counters and remove any dust from sanding and then once that is all done you are ready to mix up your top coat i am using the ligari products urethane gloss top coat and we are going to get this mixed up and we are going to get this applied you're going to roll out your nap roll again make sure that there is no excess lint because you just sanded out your counters why would you want more lint in your counters so you're gonna mix part A and part B together you are gonna mix those for about a minute and a half and then you are going to mix the allotted amount of water for your top coat in and then mix that again for another minute and a half My mind, I will Once you've got it all mixed up, you are ready to pour it in your nice clean paint tray. I highly recommend making sure that you get the roller all covered up, but then rolling it out because you don't want it dripping with your top coat. You're going to apply a thin layer of the top coat to your countertops. You do not need a ton of this stuff. This takes about 12 to 24 hours to dry. And just because the top coat is dry does not mean that the epoxy underneath it has completely set. You can do the fingernail test to see when your epoxy is done setting by just kind of sticking your fingernail into the counter and if you make an indent on your countertops it is definitely not ready you want it all to be rock hard before setting your sink back in if you took your sink out and putting stuff on your countertops ours took about three days to completely set everybody's dry time set time is going to be completely different because of humidity what temperature you keep your home at but make sure you are applying 
a thin top coat so that this doesn't take a ton of time to dry as well. And this top coat will give your countertops a slight, very, very slight orange peel texture to them, which was great when applying it because you could see where you had applied it and where you didn't apply it. So just hit every area that you epoxy it that you need a top coat on and just roll it out a nice thin layer. And then once you are done rolling your top coat out, you just leave it, you let it set and you let it dry and you have nice, beautiful, super durable countertops. It is insane seeing the transformation from what the countertops were to what they are now. And the whole process was really cool and really fun to do. To be honest, I was really stressed out about it and had the worst anxiety before we actually got started with it, thinking that it was going to be really hard, and it actually wasn't. It was super easy. It was time consuming, but it was really easy and it was really fun, and I highly recommend doing it if you are on the fence about it. Just go for it. It's so fun. It's an affordable way to update your kitchen without break in the bank and you get the marbled or the granite look that you are wanting without spending a ton of money. I really love the whole process and I totally want to do it in our bathrooms as well. So once you're done, you just let it set and you let it dry. I'm going to be doing two other videos to go with this one. I am going to be doing a tips and a tricks video. Everything that I wish I would have done and would have known before applying my epoxy countertops. Everything that would have made it a lot easier. And then I'm also going to be doing a separate video on how to prep your kitchen and how to prep your counters before applying your epoxy countertops. So this is our finished product and I am so pleased with how it turned out. Like I said, we do have some some drips in the backsplash but it's fine once you put stuff on the countertops you don't really see it but I love the look I love the whole process it was so much fun if you are new around here and this is your first time being on my channel thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope that you will stick around and subscribe to my channel I have a bunch of cleaning motivation on my channel lifestyle stuff motherhood stuff and we are going to be doing updates on our kitchen budget friendly updates to get this kitchen to be our dream kitchen without breaking the bank. So do not forget to hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, give it a huge thumbs up. And if you have any questions, leave them in a comment down below or follow me in on Instagram. It's just my first name and my last name as my handle. And you can ask me all of the questions over there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I thoroughly enjoyed the whole process of doing these epoxy countertops. Thank you guys again. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I will catch you in the next video.